First, I must say thanks to God for sparing my life to be here this morning, you know, and to the saints of God who called me back from the other side. If it wasn't for you this morning, I wouldn't be here because I believe my number call on Wednesday. But because of the love and, you know, on this side, you know, then you called me back. And... I'm going to tell you what happened. Um, on Wednesday morning, from about two weeks, um, fever and, you know, and, you know, weakness, you know, just set in, no food, no, no drink, nothing, just, just feel down, you know. And um, on Wednesday morning, I was on my way to, to town, pick up Brother Lambert and... Um, and leave out feeling quite fine and, you know, going to Kingston. So going up Sligoville there, um, I remember going through this, the, the stop sign at um, Rockall Primary. It's Rockall, I think, yes. I never stop at that stop sign. For the first time in my life, you know, I just fly through the stop sign. And I knew that something was happening to me, but I, I, I couldn't tell, explain it. So, and somewhere there uh, along the pathway, you know, Paulette was there. She, she realized that something happening to me. She was calling out to me, but I wasn't responding. And then she called to Sam and you know, Sam called to me and shout out, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. And all I remember said to him, you know, she said, Daddy, dead. Because I was a dead person. You know, and I pull off one side, and that is all I remember. And there was a, I remember stepping out of the vehicle into the, um, the other one, to, to the police station. But... When I reached to the police station, I know, I never knew any, anything more. But I can remember this, that I was going through the year, and while I was going up, I was saying to my friends in town, forgive me, f 
for leaving and not telling you. You know? So I know that. And I reached to a beautiful place. I know that I was in heaven, right? Looking back on earth and see everything. I said, man, what a way earth, miserable, you know? You know, how I lived on that place so long, you know? And, but when the message went out, the scenes start to intercede, then I start to come back to earth because when, when I was in the police vehicle, I remember hearing everything, seeing everything bright and clear, but I was unconscious, you know? So, you know, sometime, you know, Paulet would have to tell me what, um, what happened between some time because I would be talking, but unconscious still, you know? But I believe that, uh, you know, I, I, I always tell people, I say, well, the message is real, the message is real, heaven is real, heaven is a beautiful place, you know, and all of that. But I can tell you this for sure. I've probed the land, I, I've seen it, I believe it. I, 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 I have no doubt that the message that we preach is the truth. And there's a better home await us. Because, you see, when you slip out of the body, it's like, it's like you've snapped your finger. And that is nothing to worry about sins. Nothing to worry about. It's better than this. Better than this, I can tell you. Because I have, I, have, I have witnessed for myself. So now, it made me more stronger. Stronger than ever. You know, I, I would just encourage you to just step up to the world, just stay with the world, because this world have nothing to offer us but misery and sorrow. So, saints of God, this morning, stay with the world, because it won't be long. God bless you. Take up the cross and follow me. the morning the Lord gave me this scripture on the state of emergency Acts 1 and verse 8 but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the utmost part of the earth you know from that I went down to pray and something says, stop and read the next verse. And verse 9 says, and when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. And I said, Lord, he might have already gone. But I asked one request. Let him come back to the assembly and share the testimony to the people. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Ain't God good? We've got so many blessings. So undeserving. Hallelujah. I believe what that which we ask, believing God will grant it to us. Shake somebody in and say, God bless you this morning. Glad to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. We are humbled by the ways of our God this morning. Hallelujah. 
I'd like you to turn your Bible to 2 Corinthians chapter 3 as the first scripture that we would use this morning. Hallelujah. We certainly give God thanks for all of his blessings and for all that he has done. I'm, I'm just humbled by the ways of my God. Amen. 1 Corinthians 3, and I read from verse, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 3, and I read from verse 13. And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded, for until this day remain it, the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament. Which veil is done away in Christ? But even until this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with open face beholding, as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. You may be seated. You know, I'd like to just reflect your minds back into the Old Testament as I speak this morning on the mystery behind the veil. You know, Brother Brenham said that wherever God is, there is a veil. Amen? Wherever God is, there is a veil. And the veil serves a purpose. The, the veil was a separator. Amen? It says that there was one veil that separate the congregation, hallelujah, from the inner courts of the temple. There was another veil that separated uh, the holy place uh, from, or the inner courts from the holy place. Uh, and there was a veil that separated uh, the holy place uh, from the most holy place. The, the veil uh, represents something. It, we, we, we talked this morning not about all the veil. But the mystery behind the veil, we talk about the final veil, the thick veil that guarded the holiest of all. Paul at one time when he speak of it, he said of which we cannot know clearly speak, having not gone behind the veil. Hallelujah. Amen. It protected the priest. Amen. When he offered the sermon is uh, in the temple. Amen. From seeing, from going. Uh, amen. Beyond the veil uh, into the holiest of all. Behind that veil uh, lays the ark of the covenant. The uh, lady said that. Uh, amen. And there was a lid on the top. Uh, amen. And inside of that. Uh, amen. Laid uh, the ark of the covenant uh, or the mercy seat uh, with a lid. And under that. Uh, amen. Lays the mercy seat. The Bible said that the Shekinah glory of God would have come down and sit, amen, right there on the mercy seat, amen, telling that God has accepted a sacrifice. But this was only done, amen, once every year on the day of atonement. Hallelujah. Amen. Last week we talked about, amen, the sin offering. Amen. Hallelujah. But the thick veil. Amen. And there beyond the veil. It represents the presence of Almighty God. But Israel could not see it. Why? Because when Adam and Eve had sinned. Amen. God drove them out of the garden. Amen. The Bible said that God. Hallelujah. God is the way to the tree of life. Amen. By a flaming sword. Amen. And so when Israel, hallelujah, gathered together, amen, around the tabernacle of God, amen, the, hallelujah, the way to the tree of life, amen, was still guarded, hallelujah. It was dead for a man to step behind that veil. Hallelujah. 
when sin entered the tree of life is veiled hallelujah amen and where the word of god is there is a veil the veil divides between the holy place and the most holy is around now if we look at the veil itself for even the veil had significance when god tell them to build the tabernacle every inch every pin every column had a significance to god the color of the veil it was blue purple and scarlet hallelujah amen of fine linen amen the bible said it was a skillful work it wasn't just something made by a novice but when you look at it it was something to be old hallelujah glory amen well, let me talk about amen that old veil amen it said that the blue amen it represent amen christ coming down from god hallelujah as a son of god amen and you know all through the old testament uh, he was a son of god amen the, the scarlet uh, it represent the shedding uh, of christ's blood uh, amen to purchase uh, our salvation remember it had not yet come uh, but it stood there in symbol amen the purple it speaks of christ's uh, kingship hallelujah he was a king uh, of the tribe of David. Amen. Yet. Uh, hallelujah. He was a rejected king. Hallelujah. But on the cross. Uh, he was crowned king. Uh, because there on the cross. Uh, amen. They write Jesus of Nazareth. Uh, king of the Jews. And brethren I'll tell you what. Uh, he is king. Hallelujah. The king of our lives. Uh, he's our coming king. Is that right? Hallelujah. Now the veil, hallelujah, is in three parts. Three different manifestations of the veil. Hallelujah, in the Old Testament, amen, there when they set up that old tabernacle, amen, the veil, hallelujah, was a thick curtain. Hallelujah, amen, yet, hallelujah, Moses had to go to the mountain, amen, to meet with God. Amen, and the Bible said, amen, that God wrote on two tablets of stone. Amen, and Moses coming down from the mountain, amen, with the two tablets. They said Moses had to put a veil over his face. Now I want you to watch this. Amen, that the word of God, amen, by God's finger was written on the tablets of stone, the commandment. But yet Moses, amen, was the one to declare it. And Moses being the one to declare it, he was God to the people and Moses being God to the people amen he had to take a veil and cover himself amen why because he represented to them the presence of almighty God in their midst no wonder God tell him and you will be to them instead of God Moses was God to the people brother Branham said when Moses had the word of God to declare it was more than Moses it was God but when the word was declared, it was Moses again. Hallelujah. Amen. So Paul saying, and not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not look steadfast. I could not steadfastly look to the hand of that which is abolished. Hallelujah. But their minds. Hallelujah. Their minds were blinded. Oh, glory. Amen. The second veil. Hallelujah. It moved from a curtain. Amen. Guarding the most holy place. The mercy seat. And the Shekinah glory of God. It moved from that. And it came. Hallelujah. Skin veil. In Philippians 2. Hallelujah. The Bible tell who being in the form of God. Hallelujah. What was it? Cross. Veiled to the people. In the unveiling of God. 65. Paragraph 65. No notice now. As he came. He had to come as son of man. Because the Holy Scripture said. That he would. God would rise up a prophet. To them. 
So he came not calling himself the son of God. He called himself the son of man. The word made flesh. Hallelujah. That was his dispensation. He was a son of man prophesying to fulfill and reveal to them all the things that he had been done. And type what he was. Hallelujah. Amen. Then he was on earth as son of man. Christ, hallelujah, God in man. Oh, Jesus, I like to just read, amen, in the book of Philippians, chapter 2. Hallelujah. In verse 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and become obedient unto death even the death of the cross hallelujah amen but let me show you now a contrast between the veil in the Old Testament and the skin veil of badger skin. You see, under the administration of that linen veil, hallelujah, they brought the blood of an animal and it could only cover sin. So when they went out, they still had their sin. It was only covered. But when, hallelujah, the word was made flesh, that veil Jesus Christ, hallelujah, he was more than the animal. Hallelujah, he was born, virgin born, because God wanted a perfect sacrifice. He's a rat, and if that sacrifice was perfect to God, what about you and I? How do you judge him this morning? God says perfect, what do you say of Christ? Hallelujah. Amen. But his blood did not cover sin. It remits sin. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Bible said in the Old Testament, uh, their conscience uh, was snared. But under the blood of Christ. Uh, hallelujah. Glory. You've got liberty, uh, freedom uh, by the blood of Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, sir. Amen. And the third veil, hallelujah, is the one we wear today. Amen. Hallelujah, the veil of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus, Christ, Christ, the second veil. Christ, hallelujah, God, a morpher in skin. Oh, brother, parents said, God. Hallelujah, Kinos, uh, he emptied himself. Uh, God didn't vomit out, no sir. He said he changed his form. All oh, that God was, uh, he poured into Christ. Uh, are you there with me? Uh, God is invisible. Amen, but when he become cross, the Logos, uh, you could see him, he said, uh, like a little halo of light. Uh, hallelujah, playing a child, uh, playing before the Father's throne. Uh, that's who he was. He was coming in a tangible form that you and I could behold him. Hallelujah. Moses saw him, but he couldn't see his face. He saw the back part of a man. Abram met him in Melchizedek when he come from the slaughter of the kings. Oh, hallelujah. And we saw Melchizedek no more because he became Jesus Christ. But as Melchizedek, in the Old Testament, the Old Covenant was not done away with. But what a man he was, that he come to J to Abraham. Hallelujah, the friend of God. Hallelujah, the Bible said, hallelujah, that he eat with him. He eat animal meat, drink milk. Hallelujah, God Almighty. Hallelujah, come down. Hallelujah, in the form of a man. He's a rat. And tell Abraham uh, the secret of his heart. Uh, hallelujah. 
before Christ came, the Messiah sign was right there. Abram saw it. Hallelujah. And what kind of man Abram was? You see, God looking for character. What kind of character Abram was? The Bible said he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was faithful. God said to him, the things that to the natural man, it is impossible, but yet Abram held on to it. How okay, can you hold on to that? Because God says so. Because God said it. And if God said it, uh, that settles it. Jesus tell them, God is able to raise up of the stones children to Abraham. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What kind of man this was. Him that saw God. Hallelujah. He saw God in a vision. He heard the voice of God. Hallelujah, had seen light. Uh, hallelujah, and all that. Uh, but just before the promised son come, uh, he saw Jehovah in the form uh, of a man. Yet the old covenant uh, was still there. You know why? Uh, Abram was a seed. Uh, he was predestined. Uh, hallelujah. So he saw Jehovah as a man. Glory. Yet he's a morpher today uh, and blind denomination cannot recognize him. They don't know who he is. That's the mystery behind the veil. In the Old Testament, their eyes are never able to see it. They couldn't look beyond that. Oh, it was dead to see what was there. Yet Aaron not without blood to offer for himself and the people once, for, once a year. That was a memorial. Is that right? But one day when God selected a lamb. Because I tell you last week, all the lambs of all the house that was offered, they were pointing to one lamb, one lamb. And one day God said, hallelujah, you don't bring no lamb. You don't have to bring no lamb. Because all your mysteries, amen, of keeping your lamb for that four days, it's still not clean. It's still not worthy. I'm going to give you a lamb. Hallelujah. Amen, the songwriter said, he left the borders of glory. Hallelujah. He left the splendor of heaven. Nowhere his destiny was a lowly hill of Golgotha. But there he had to lay down for you and me. Amen. God stepped down. Hallelujah. Behind Badger's skin. He's a rat. He moved from God to become man. Woo. Hallelujah. Jesus. My God. My God. God come down. Oh, not as God, but as man. Mm -mm. Hallelujah. Jesus, my Lord. So here Paul said in Philippians, who being in the form of God, taught it not robbery to be equal with God. He know who he is. That's why he tell them, I come from God. Brother Brown, he said, I'm going back to God. Hallelujah. No man take my life from me. But I've got power to lay my life down. And I've got power to take it up back again. That's the God I talk about. Tell me who you serve this morning. I tell you about a God who had power to lay his life down at Calvary. And enough power to lift it up back again. Oh, Jesus. Mm. Exalting the scriptures this morning. The Bible said, oh, when he died at Calvary, there as he lay there on the cross, amen, the sun refused to shine. Shouldn't that there be no sign to them? But they were blinded by man's tradition. Hallelujah. Amen, the stone, amen, of the tomb of that day rented. 
Hallelujah. The dead saints uh, would appear to many after his resurrection. Is the right? Uh, but what a mystery. Oh, of this veil. Uh, amen. The Bible said, uh, and the lightning strike, uh, and it struck, uh, hallelujah, the veil of the temple, and it rent it from top to bottom. Are you there? And expose uh, for the first time, uh, man could look uh, beyond the veil. Hallelujah. But it's not that. Uh, God was saying to them, uh, the glory uh, beyond the thick curtain, uh, that glory uh, has been done away with. Uh, there's another glory uh, that is right before you. Yet Isaiah said about him, uh, hallelujah, glory. Uh, he was the Lord form uh, of godliness. Uh, hallelujah, when we shall see him, uh, we shall hid our faces from him. Uh, but he was wounded uh, for our transgression. Uh, he was bruised uh, by our iniquity. The chastisement uh, of our peace uh, was upon him. Uh, and by his stripes, by his stripes, the sickness in your body, it's gone. Hallelujah. Jesus. Do you know there at Jordan that morning, the word come to the prophet, the word Christ, walk out to the prophet John, amen, that it might fulfill all righteousness. David Levy wrote this uh, in his book on the veil, he said, listen this. He said, Christ, who is of the same nature and essence of God, emptied himself and took on the limitation of humanity without surrendering any of his attribute as deity. Man, I had to say that. Hallelujah! Somebody realize it. Can I say that again? Glory. Christ, who is of the same nature and essence of God, emptied himself of and took on the limitation of humanity without surrendering any of his attributes as deity. He mash up the Trinity. Uh, I say he mash up the Trinity. Hallelujah. Without surrendering his deity. Any of his attribute. If he was a savior, he was still a savior. Oh glory, Isaiah said, he's a Lord and beside him there's no savior. Oh, hallelujah, when he come down, uh, he was still a savior. When he come down, uh, he was still a healer. When he come down, uh, he was still a banner. When he come down, uh, he was still my righteousness. Uh, when he come down, uh, he was still my provider. When he come down, uh, hallelujah, he was still the same. Oh, yes, Hallelujah, you think you get yet? He said, Christ voluntarily allowed the limitation of some of his divine rights during his earthly ministry. So they said, if he was God, then how could he make a statement like this? Hallelujah, when he say, no man, no, the day or the hour, no, if no man, not even the angel of heaven, but the father only. What he did, he voluntarily allowed the limitation of some of his attributes. You know why? Because he had to be of like passion, like you and I. He had to feel pain like a man. Brother Branham said he had a headache. He was hungry like a man. He cried like a man. But he said that day... In the boat that day when he put his foot upon the bow of the boat uh, and speak to the wind uh, and said, peace, uh, be still. Uh, he said it was more than a man. Uh, that was God. Hallelujah. 
We had a God man. Hallelujah. Woo. Jesus, my Lord. Hallelujah. Then in Hebrew 10, 22, let us bring that on the board. Hallelujah. There were fourfold commitment. Amen. Hallelujah. To come to the Lord. Hallelujah. We've got a fourfold commitment. Watch uh, Hebrew 10, 22. Let us uh, draw near. Don't stay off on the infringes. Let, let us what the Bible say. Draw near. What draw near mean? Come close. Oh, we're going to come with a true heart. We, hey, come on now. No, no, but with a true heart. In what? Full assurance of faith. Let me tell you, if you're not on faith this morning, you're wasting your time. Are you there with me? But he that cometh to God must believe that he is. That he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That's the God who I serve. Hallelujah. So you're going to come with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Having your heart sprinkled. Jesus, they sprinkle the mercy seat and the vessels back then. But on the cross, you don't want your head sprinkled. Oh, many of the head sprinkle, it can't work. Having your what? Your heart sprinkled. From a what? Oh, Jesus, my Lord. Don't tell me you weren't evil. From an evil conscience. And your body. Wash. With pure water. Oh, Jesus. Oh, you hear about the washing of the water by the word? Look at the other verse now. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. So the second thing, that, that was number one. The second one, let us hold fast. In other words, don't move. Don't move from the profession of your faith without wavering. For he is faithful. That promise, Jesus my Lord. But so many of you ask me and I say yes. I go and deliver. I might not deliver today or tomorrow, but I'm going to deliver. And I tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm human. But God made the promise. When he made the promise to Abraham, Abraham couldn't meet the requirement. He was too whole. Sarah was too whole. They couldn't meet the requirement. But the circumstance of their life could not hinder God. Hallelujah. Sarah was years past menopause. She can't have no baby. A milk veins dry up. But God didn't think about it. God said. Hallelujah. You're trying to think about what you're going to say. God don't think about it. God said. Hallelujah. For all nature got to obey him. Hallelujah. For I'm going to bless you. You're going to be a father. And God wait till him too whole. I said God wait till him too whole to carry the son. God come walking. And here brother said look I said oh, where am I going now? Hallelujah! You're about 50 years late, but I'm just coming. Hallelujah! And him say a thing. Can I hide from you? You remember the promise? Can you have to remind him, you know? After 10 years, you're top member. 20 years, we're top member. 30 years, you don't believe it. Hallelujah! But you remember the promise that I made with you? I'm going to bring it to pass. Jesus. And my prophet Malachi said, And the next 28 days. Who 
Oh, Sarah, begin to hover it. Huh? This had to be God. This had to be God. Hallelujah. God hiding the mystery behind the veil. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus. And I tell you, if Abraham didn't understand, they went on a little honeymoon. You, you, you know, when we got married, we never had this kind of resource. But look at cattle. Look at camel. Eh? You, you know, Sarah, let us go on a little honeymoon. Hallelujah. Because in Abraham's eyes, she began to look fairer than yesterday. Oh, hallelujah. There's something about salvation. There's something about the promise. Hallelujah. Begin to change their body. And the king says, Sarah, who is that young lady? How old she was? 90 year old. Who is that young lady? Bring her over to me. My, my, my. And God had to tell him, restore the man his wife. I want to show you more. That Abraham lie. Abraham lie. Because him, him, him said, tell the king, you are my sister, that him not go kill me. Is that right? And that no hinder God. I said, when you're in the promise, Jesus, <laughs> glory to God, hallelujah, Jesus, even the lie was covered. Je Amen, hallelujah, and the next thing you know, Isaac is on the scene, is a right, God behind skin. So in the Old Testament, they had the veil of the temple tabernacle. But God gave them a preview of where he's going. I wonder if you hear me. You ever hear about the overlap? Is that right? Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. So we go to verse. Uh, hallelujah. Hebrew 10, 23. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us hold fast. The profession of our faith without wavering. For he's faithful that promise. Verse 24. Hallelujah. And let us consider one another. Eh. Mm. Eh. Let us consider one another. You see, this is just the dressing room. If you can't look over your shoulder. If you can't love them, then who you see. Let us consider one another to provoke and to love. And to good works. Is that right? Love the brotherhood. Love the brethren. I wonder if you hear me somebody. They, they, they said the worst sin among brethren. Is to turn brother against brother. Hallelujah. Jesus. Verse 25. Hallelujah. Not forsaking. Do I preach to you this morning? Amen. I want to ask you this morning. What are you going to do? Forget me out of the house of God. Eh? Jesus. Rest of it, the Bible talk about pillars. Pillars in the temple of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Pillar in the temple of my God. Say anything you want about me. Behave any way you want. Hallelujah. I am a live. I am a born. Hallelujah. I didn't join this church. I had a new birth. Hallelujah. Brother Cody, when you come, you were here before. You just recognize who you are. Jesus. Just said they say you come just a few months. No, you are here all along. You just recognize who you are. What did the prodigal say when he realized? 
I shall arise. Eh? I shall arise and go back to my father. Not forsaking the assembly of yourselves together as the manner of some is. But do what? We exalt mean? Lift up. Oh, Jesus, my Lord. If you're not nothing good for say, shut your mouth. But exalt one another. And so much the more. Oh, Jesus, man. As you see the day coming. Hallelujah. When, if you don't live long enough to make the change, some of you are going to go by debt. But whether you have the change of the body or you go by debt, it really don't matter. It's a right for the bowels to be absent from the body. It's to be what? Present with God. You see, people, they think that when you're dead, how you're going to a state of unconsciousness. No, 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 no. The Bible said Jesus, when he died, his soul. You know, when the body was in the tomb, he meets some of them and tell them, don't touch me yet. For I've not yet ascended to my father. Then the Bible tell you, Paul by revelation said, he ascended, he descended down into hell. Hallelujah. And preach to the souls that were in prison. That one time was disobedient. Where was his body? Lying in the tomb. And the Roman soldier guarding the tomb. I could have tell them but they wouldn't believe. He's not there. He's not there. Brethren, I'll tell you this house is just a veil. One day, you're going to step out of here. Amen, my brother said. It is more glorious on the other side. Jesus, my Lord, why do you fear, brethren? Why do you fear? Oh, no wonder brother Paul said, when he come to that realization, he said, oh, death, where is thy sting and grave? Where is? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Brethren, draw near with a true heart, full assurance of faith, having your heart sprinkled, oh, hallelujah, from an evil conscience, and your body washed in pure water. So it moved from the linen veil to the skin veil. Hallelujah. What power. What glory in the skin veil. But I think in Hebrew 10 somewhere, he talks about the high priest of our profession. And he said, and such an high priest. Oh, Jesus. And someone had such an high priest becometh us. Oh, hallelujah. Are you still there with me in the Bible? Hallelujah. For such an high priest becometh us. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen this. Hallelujah. Hebrew 10 and verse 14. For by one offering, he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that, uh, he had said before, this is a covenant that I will make with, uh, with them after these days. Uh, said the Lord, I will put my laws in their heart and in their minds will I write them and their sin and their iniquity will I remember no more. No more. In other words, it's not covered. It's remitted by the blood of Christ. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, where remission 
of these is there is no more offering. <laughs> Jesus. No more offering for sin. The offering is already made. Having therefore, no, 19. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holies by the blood of Jesus. Here and couldn't go at him like. Moses never see behind here. Hallelujah. But now you have attained boldness. Hallelujah. Amen. By a new and living way which he has consecrated for us through the veil. That is to say his flesh. Oh Jesus. My Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So in 2 Corinthians, we're going backward and forward. Hallelujah. In 2 Corinthians, amen. Hallelujah. 3 again. And verse 17. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty. You know what liberty mean? Freedom. Freedom. Hallelujah. You, you, you see, when you go to somebody's house, hallelujah, and they don't give you liberty, you, you've got to wait. And if they say sit down, what you do? You sit down. Oh, you you got to sit at a specific place because you don't get liberty to sit anywhere. You know where you can't go in the bedroom and sit down. You sit down in the living room because that you can't go in the kitchen and open the pot. You don't have that liberty. There's limitation to that liberty. I wonder if you hear me. When you visit church, sometimes you wait on the usher to put you where you must sit. Because sometimes in church, you know, some people got them seat. That are fit them seat. If you sit down there and them come, you're going to have to move. Because I hear them sit down there. Huh? Are you that? I feel you see that. That's where you sit. Hallelujah. And there somebody come and sit here. You say, move over. Because you're sitting in my seat. But now with Christ, oh hallelujah, if you're a visitor here, hold your seat where you see vacant. You can't tell nobody if you move. It's not your place. But when it comes to Christ and his consecrate away for you, you've got liberty through the spirit. When you come, how you come home to your own house and your own place. Jesus. Hallelujah. You see when I pray then. I don't pray to your God. I pray to my God. I don't pray to your friend. I pray to my friend. You, you have a meet a friend of your friend yet? You, you understand what I mean? A friend of your friend. It's not your friend. You know, it's your friend friend. But your friend introduced you to them friend. Jesus, my Lord. You have some people introduce people to Christ. But they hold him, you know. Because I feel them friend, you know. Now cross them boundaries. No, 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 no. Now cross the line, there's my friend. You have some people bringing people to Christ. But they hold him, you know. And they tell them, go that far. If you hear something, believe that, you know. Because you see, I'm me carry you, and I'm only giving you this liberty. Shake yourself, shake them off, let them go. Hallelujah! For Christ, give you individual liberty to enter in a true and living way. Jesus. 
There was a time when the way was not fully open. And you know, a Gentile woman come one time. Because he had come for the Jews. And she began to cry out to him, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And they said, he never peer no mine. And the disciples said, Master, she called for you. And he said, it's not right to take the children bread and give it to the dogs. But the woman was desperate. You see, desperation. You see, desperation. He bring on the promise. She was desperate. Hallelujah. She said, yes, Lord. Even the dog, and I might be a dog, but even the dog eat the crumb that fell from the table. Him couldn't turn her away. But blind Bartimaeus, he was a Jew, and he was blind. And so when he heard Jesus coming, he had liberty to cry out, Jesus, thou son of David had mercy on me, and it stopped him in his track. Because a son of the covenant had called. Where were you and I that time? We were counted like dogs. Foreigners to the commonwealth of Israel. Is the right? Hallelujah. But now we are being made nigh by the blood of Christ in this new and living way. I'm not here because you are here. I'm not here because you called me. Oh, Jesus, my Lord. Amen. Somebody tell you you are here. Amen. Because I tell you, and if I never tell you, you wouldn't come. Tell them I'm sorry. I'm not here because of you. I'm here because of God. You are just a vessel. Amen. To bring me to the rock. I know that I meet the rock. Amen. I leave the vessel and I pick up on the rock. I wonder if you hear me, somebody. You don't have to go to God through your pastor. You don't have to go through a friend. Well, you've got access. Amen. To the true and living way. By the blood of Christ. Amen. It has moved from the person. Amen. To the spirit. Now the Holy Ghost. Amen. Give you liberty. That's the veil. Amen. Jesus. The brother said, Look at Hattie Wright. That time when the third pull, she remember you remember it? Of all the everything, that woman said the right thing. You've got to say the right word, the right thing to God. The only way you can say the right thing, you've got to know who you are. Do you know you approach by relationship? Amen. Hallelujah. And you know we're in the same church, but we have a different relationship. If another sister begins to talk to me like my wife, I say, but you're not my wife. You can't tell me that. Is that right? That's a wrong relationship. Is that right? You got to know who you talk to. Your children talking to you a certain way. You got to tell them who, who you're talking to. You don't recognize who you're talking to. Is that right? Because, amen, my, my daughter has no right to me as a husband. I'm her father. And my wife has no right to me as a, as a father. I'm her husband. Is that right? You've got a right to God as a father, as a husband, as a friend. As a savior, as a deliverer, as a problem solver, as a burden bearer. Hello, he's my everything. He is my all. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So he said, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. They never had that in the Old Testament. They had to come by a pattern, a certain way. At a certain time of the year, the priest had to do a certain thing. But now you've got access by the blood of Christ. Amen. You see, I'm feeling this pain. But I'm going to wait until I go to church. I'm going to go to the altar. And I'm going to stand. You know, there's some people that come at the altar and 
when they stand there, they want certain people to pray for them. Because in their mind, if, if that person don't pray for me, I won't be healed. You see, your expectation is wrong. Is that right? Oh, Jesus. Because you're not coming to a person. You're coming to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, who are, who are we? Jesus said, hallelujah, I come from God. I go back to God. Hallelujah, the book of Revelation say about you, the spirit and the bride say, come. Is that right? Revelation 10 say about you, hallelujah. Hey, man, you must prophesy again. Hallelujah, the word of prophecy is in the bride. He does move from the thick veil. He does move from the flesh, Jesus Christ, one man. Amen. Now into a many membered body. God veiled behind skin, your skin. That's the mystery of the veil. Are you there with me? Oh, hallelujah. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Oh, but how Malachi 4 tell us all that God was, he poured into Christ. And all that Christ was, uh, he poured into you and I. Now where is the mystery of Christ? It is in you. Hallelujah. That's why we can pray now and say, Lord, let thy will be done on earth. This earth, uh, as it is in heaven, you now become the object uh, of God's righteousness. Uh, are you there with me? He becomes sin for me who knew no sin that I might become the righteousness of God in him. Where is God's righteousness? It is in the believer. Oh, hallelujah. If you can believe he becomes sin, then you must believe you become righteousness. The bride is now made kings and priests unto our God. Therefore, you are given access behind the veil. Hallelujah to offer sacrifice. And Paul tells us a new way. I beseech you now, therefore, brethren, that you present what? Your bodies. God don't want just your hand, your foot, your head. You present your body, living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God. Which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world system. You see, this world system, it's leading for one place. But don't be conformed to this. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word is in the bride. Amen. Amen. As it was in Mary. Hallelujah. So where is there going to be the final voice? The final voice uh, is in the bride of Christ. Oh hallelujah. You know brethren. A lot of emphasis I realize. Uh, has been put in prayer. What a powerful tool. That God has given to you and I. For if my people that are called by my name. Would humble themselves and pray. Hallelujah. And would turn from their wicked ways. Uh, then God, hallelujah, would forgive their sin. He would yield their land. Hallelujah, that's the word of God. Hallelujah. But Moses, when he come to the Red Sea, and he went back to God, amen, crying to God, God said, I've already given it to you. Speak the word. Oh, hallelujah. The word of God is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. So I say this morning, where is that veil? Oh, hallelujah. The veil, God, is veiling the believer. Mm. Brother Keith, I can't believe that. Look at me. God's not looking at you. He's looking at the sacrifice. Didn't I tell you that last week? And that sacrifice is perfect. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are perfect. Hallelujah. You now hide. Oh, glory to God, the mystery of Almighty God. Are you there with me? The mystery of God is in the believer. So now the prophet, hallelujah, when he should preach the seventh seal, he preached Christ, the mystery of God revealed. Is that right? 
What's the mystery? Christ, the mystery of God. What is Christ? The anointed one. The anointed Messiah. The anointed word. Where is the anointed word? Hallelujah. It was behind the thick veil. Then it was in Jesus Christ. Now that anointed word. Hallelujah. Jesus said to them. Oh, even your law said. Them to whom the word of God is come out of. They are gods. Then why condemn me when I say. I am the son of God. Hallelujah. Where is the word of God? Amen. Hallelujah. Touch not the world. Lord's anointed. Hallelujah. Brother Branham was telling of a woman. She said her husband, amen, wouldn't dwell per with the chores in the house. All he do is read the Bible. You know, he's a preacher and he was studying the word. So she get all fed up and frustrated. She took the Bible from him, grabbed it out of his lap and she threw it in the fire. All you know to do is to read that Bible. He said, I think he said she was frying egg. And the oil spill and the fire come and it burned her to death. He said, touch not uh, the Lord's anointed. There you are this morning. Hallelujah. Whosoever will hurt uh, the least. The least uh, of the little ones. But do you know, brethren, we're not in a picnic. We're in a battle. For your adversary, the devil, is like a roaring lion. Seeking whom he may devour. May I say this to you? And you see your unsaved loved ones uh, when him can't catch you, when him can't trap you, when him can't get you, those who you love, him cut them down. You, you know what? Uh, so that your heart bleed, so that the tears come running down. But you've got to realize uh, the weapons of our warfare is not carnal, but they are mighty through the spirit uh, in the pulling down of the struggles of the enemy. Job even pray for his unsaved loved ones. Hallelujah. When, hallelujah when, when God said to the devil, strike him. Hallelujah. He said, well, if I strike him, he will curse you to the Lord. There you have him. Hallelujah. Job declare, I know that my redeemer liveth. And that he shall stand in the last days. And though the skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh. I'm going to see my God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall be old, and not another. I ask you this morning, when the veil of God is hidden behind your skin, hallelujah, what can stop you this morning? Who can stop you this morning? Hallelujah, you can face the battle. Oh, hallelujah. Glory, not the weapons of this world, world, but the word of God. Amen. For Christ overcome the devil by the word of God. He said, yes, he was hungry. The man never eat for 40 days and 40 nights. Yes, the man was hungry. He could turn those stones into bread. But Jesus declared, man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, that shall man live by. What you're going to use in this time? You're going to use a word. The word. The word. The word of God. Are you there with me? And the word of God in the mouth of Hallelujah, the anointed children of God can defeat the devil on any ground, in any place, anywhere. Declare the word of God, but I command you, Satan, in the name of the Lord, drop your weapons and flee. For the Lord has given us the authority to walk all over you. Hallelujah, I shall stand Hallelujah. And declare the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. I shall not die. Hallelujah. But I shall stand up right and declare God's word. Whatever you say in your mouth. Whatever you believe. Hallelujah. Oh, that's what you decreed. God is going to give it to you. Children of God. You've got to know who you are. What battle you're in. Who you fight with this morning. Hallelujah for the God who you serve. Hallelujah. He'll never defeated. Oh, we serve this morning and all time. Undisputed. Undefeated. Champion 
of love. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Though all around me seem like failure, but I will stand upon the word of God. Are you there with me this morning? For I'm a child of a king. I am born for a purpose. I'm standing here, not because you want me to, but because of the word of Almighty God. You've got to know who you are. If you stop believing, you are defeated. The Bible says uh, when Joshua was in the battle, and Moses was upon the mountain, the musicians can come. Hallelujah. He said, Moses uh, held up his hands in victory while the battle was still going on. And while his hand was up, they prevailed over the enemy. But the man got tired. The man got tired. And his hands begin to come down. And as his hands come down, the enemy was getting up of them. But hallelujah, he called to. Hallelujah. And said, hold up my hands. You know what we're going to do in this day? We're going to hold up one another's hand. Hallelujah. For the battle is not yours. It is the Lord. If you fight by yourself, you are defeated. But the Bible said wherever two or three are gathered, touching anything concerning me, I will in the midst to bless and to do good. You're not a lone ranger. You're not a lone soldier. When Elijah thought that he was the only one, what did God do? God show him, I've got 7,000 more that has not bowed down to the enemy. How many has God got this morning? There's more on your side than on the side of the enemy. There's more for us than there is against us. Hallelujah. We're going to have some battles. Hello. But I tell you in the name of Jesus, we're going to fight this battle. Hallelujah. Some will be defeated. But in Jeremiah, he said, save only those who sigh and cry. You see these trials that we have? That's where God wants you. You see these things that we're going through? That's where God wants to put you. Save only those. Because there's some that doesn't carry the burden of the body of Christ. But for those who will carry the burden of the body of Christ, who will stand up in this day? Who will fight in the battle of the Lord? Save only those who sigh and cry over the abomination of the city. They are the bride of Christ. Which side are you standing on? Oh, what a day when the prophet had to declare it. Seek ye this day whom you will serve. If Baal be God, serve him. But if God is God, serve God. Which side are you on? Declare your hand. Because I say to you this morning as I close, the rapture, all the rapture will do, it will declare for you which side you're on. Amen? All the rapture will do is declare which side you're fighting on. But I'll tell you, to get on that side, you've got to do it now. You better get right with God. Hey! Come and do it now. Under the cross of Jesus, I lay my burden down. You get to get right with God. Come and do it now. Get right. Get right. Get right. Is there one not ready this morning? You better get right with God. Come and do it now. Under the cross of Jesus, I lay my burden down. You better get right with God. Come and do it now. Get right. Get right. Get right with God. Is there one more this morning? 
Aleluia. Aleluia. The prophet of God said the veils of tradition, the veil of denomination, the veil of your ideas I block you from seeing the plan of God. But I tell you, now is the time to get on God's side. Who are you fighting with? Who fight on your side? Oh, hallelujah. Jesus. I tell you what the devil wants to do is to weaken you. When he's weak and your sickness will take you. And you're weak. You, you have no defense. But stand ye therefore. Is there one that would like to be remembered this morning as we pray? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus. Lord the many hands that's raised God this morning. Lord God, you know every heart this morning, every life, every home, oh God. Lord God, we look, Lord Jesus, and we see veils. But Lord God, beyond that veil lie the mystery of Christ. Lord Jesus, we know this morning that, Lord God, we're not just preaching to individuals. But Lord God, there's a battle even in the house of God this morning. Lord God, there's a spiritual battle. But Lord God, your words to, to Daniel that day. You said, Daniel, before you said you are to pray and to seek your face, your prayer was heard and the answer was on the way. Lord Jesus, send home a prodigal this morning, God. Lord, is there a young man that has gone astray? Is there a young woman, oh God, who is wavering? In her ways, oh God, just miss the part of the cross. Lord Jesus, the enemy is gathering around. Oh, to devour, but Lord, in the name of Jesus. We come against that spirit this morning, God. Lord God, we pray that you would restore a backslider, oh God, you might restore, oh God, one that, Lord, in their mind, they've drifted, oh God, oh, far at sea from the old lifeboat. But Lord God, this morning, hallelujah, the lifeboat sail on. Lord, if there's a drifting seaman, may they be rescued this morning. Hallelujah. Jesus, call somebody back, oh God, who has given up hope. Somebody, oh God, who said, oh God, oh whatever comes, let it be. Lord God, that's not our testimony. We're in a battle to fight unto the end. And Lord God, we call out, oh, to the soldiers of the cross, stand up. Pull your sword this morning. Declare what battle you fight. Who's fighting for you? Oh God, we pray this morning. If there's a prodigal in the house, Lord God, may the unwritten be on the wall. May look within himself this morning and recognize the Lord God today. Hallelujah. I shall arise and go back to my father's house. And I will say to him, Father, I have sinned. Lord God, remember that Father never turned the Son away. But Lord God is a good Father. He put on him a robe, put on his finger a ring. He killed the fatted calf. And Lord God, we know that all heaven would have rejoiced this morning. Oh God, about a wandering one. That, oh God, through this word this morning, has find their way back, has looked within themselves and said, Lord Jesus, I know that the road that I'm traveling, the way that I'm going, it will lead to destruction. But Lord God, I, I will hold on. Oh God, to the tread of life this morning. May that scarlet tread oh, reach somebody this morning. And Lord God, may they return. Oh, to that fountain of blood. 
Have thine own way, Lord. Lord, as we pray. Lord God, may they recognize a mystery beyond the veil this morning. The Lord God who we look to is not a man, but Jesus Christ himself. And his spirit, O oh God, that is shed abroad in our hearts this morning, calling us back to the word. Bless us this morning as we pray, believing in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Do you love him this morning? Stand on your feet and worship him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we